All right, let's take a look at what comes inside this box. Oh, first thing, business card. Hey, nothing special there. This has your batteries in it, as well as your charger. So there's your two batteries that it comes with, your USB-C charger. Uh, you can plug that into any USB port, and then you get a couple of stainless plates that have an etched line on them. We're going to show you that in a minute on how to calibrate this gauge once you put it on your machine. And in the bottom, you have your instructions. Um, your instructions are going to show uh, some bold print terms in them. Anywhere where it's bold, for the most part, it's a labeled part in the diagrams on the back. So you'll see you have your de depth adjustment knobs, your battery knob, camber adjustment, uh, camber lock screws, and so on. Then you have the gauge itself. should be wrapped up in um, some bubble wrap. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take that battery knob, um, battery cover knob off and then stretch that ribbon out. Then we're going to open up your battery. And these batteries are flat on both sides. They don't have a knob. So um, you want to pay attention to what it says right here, negative and positive. Negative on all the units should go on the left, positive on the right. Um, but you can look if you want to double check in the bottom to make sure it says negative and positive. Slide that in there and then try to turn it on. Notice that it didn't turn on. These batteries need to be clocked in the right position um, before they're going to turn on. So you might have to pull it out a halfway and shove it back in and try it again. Oh, I didn't even have it on. Okay, that's why. Um, but if, if you have a problem with that, just clock the battery in a different position and it should come right on. Tuck that ribbon in. Um, that has a ledge that it fits under. And then you're just going to snug that compartment um, up with this knob so that it won't come off. And there we go. Now we're ready to go throw it in the machine and calibrate it. So now that I have this uh, battery in and it's ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and pop it in a tool holder. You're going to want to put it somewhat close to uh, where your piece is going to be at that you're going to be bending. And then you can turn it on. Right, now, right off the bat, it's not going to be lined up. That's why we have these two plates right here okay, with an etched line on them. Now, stainless, um, being as bright and reflective as it is, is actually not a great choice for this. I just did this so that it wouldn't rust. Um, but the light kind of dissipates off that reflective surface. So uh, if you have a, a light right above um, your bat gauge or right above your beam, you might want to turn that off just so you can see this a little bit better on such reflective material. Um, but it's, you know, not the end of the world. So these are 60 millimeters and it has a 30 millimeter uh, from the edge to that scribed line is 30 millimeters. So if you need to set your back gauge to 30 millimeters, or I believe that's 1.181 inches, um, you can do that. Or the purpose for this is for European lowers, uh, for larger lowers, they're 60 millimeters already. So what you can do is just throw them on couple feet apart from one another um, and then what I do is I just take a flat edge and butt it up against there and then I know it's squared up and then let me get you in there so you can see on top of this right, so it's really hard to see in this video I'm trying to get everything uh, in one frame and also where I can use this because this camera is hanging off the front of my machine um, so basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to throw this in, throw those two a couple foot apart, um, 24 inches, I, it doesn't, it's not an exact science. And then uh, you can either use your bat gauge on a smaller die, um, which is a 30, 30 millimeter offset, or um, just put it on a 60 millimeter lower, uh, hold a one, two, three block or a squared edge up to the bottom of it, and, and then just push it up against it and you're good to go. Um, how you're going to want to do this first is you can adjust this direction uh, to kind of pivot it by these two um, adjustment knobs here. So if I rotate one of these, you can see at the bottom there, whoops, you can see that starting to move. Um, and, and dialing it in to first, I mean at first, can be kind of frustrating until you figure out what you're doing. So um, what I want to do is I want to try to line these up with both lines across here. So I'm going to adjust this back knob here. Uh, to get it semi close, it looks like we're good on this one. We're a little too far there, and 
I'm basically going to go back and forth until I can get it kind of squared. So what it's doing is this part is moving the back in and out and this knob is moving the front in and out. So we can move both at the same time to move it parallel um, or we can move one or the other to move it back and forth this direction. So you're going to want to uh, mess with that for a little bit or mess with that a little bit until you have both of them lined up. Um, it might take you, take you a second to do it, um, but it's really not too bad. Even if you get them parallel, if you can get them parallel, then you can turn them at the same time to move it uh, to where it should be. there if we look here we can see we're centered there and we we're centered here took a minute or so to get it lined up now the good thing about that is once I pop this out I should be able to throw it back in and have it lined perfect uh, lined up perfectly in the center of my die every time no matter if what die I have um, what tooling I'm using I should be able to throw that in whenever I need it and it should be good to go. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to run the beam up and down um, and make sure that that line stays consistent and doesn't wander. Uh, if it does, it's because your laser is cocked, um, whether it's cocked in there or your tool holder's a little bent. Um, I just put some adjustment in here. It's not a lot, but it's, a, it's enough to adjust it to make it um, parallel with your beam so that this, when you're going up and down, that beam shouldn't wander uh, forward or backward in the x-axis. Alright, I wanted to show you how the camber adjustment works. So basically what the camber adjustment does is when your beam goes up and down, if this uh, laser line goes away from you, you're going to want to um, you're going to want to turn this clockwise. If it goes towards you, you're going to want to turn this counterclockwise. What that does is it adjusts the laser. Uh, I'll just show you. It adjusts the laser um, clockwise and counterclockwise uh, so that that beam is perfectly vertical. If the beam is off at an angle, as you go down um, with your beam or up, if you have an up acting break, as that, that tooling approaches one another, this beam is going to travel back and forth if it's not perfectly clocked vertically um, and parallel to your beam. So what this does is this is kind of a push fit in there. Uh, it holds it really snug, but it's it's just loose enough where you can make some adjustments. So when this knob goes in and out, it's threaded inside here. Um, when it goes in and out, it rotates this a little bit, but it only has so much travel. It only will travel a couple degrees. Okay, so if you need more, say that I say that say that it was clocked this direction and I needed to rotate it over here. Well, that's going to be too much for this knob to do. It's going to bind up before then. So what I would do is I would rotate it clockwise and that would bring it over and it would start to bind up, right? It's getting too much of an angle on it. It only has plus or minus a couple degrees. So then I would go in, I would lock these two bolts back down. Okay, so that would tighten up the laser. And then I could turn this counterclockwise, which would bring this back around. Now, if you watch the, the, how they are in relation to one another, I can shove this back around and then I can, so basically if you turn it counterclockwise, it'll push that back. And then um, what I can do then is lock, unlock that, those bolts in the bottom again. And now I have some more adjustments. So now I could keep turning it this way if I wanted to and vice versa. I just wanted to show you so you could understand how that worked. So if it gets too tight where you can no longer adjust it anymore, you're gonna wanna tighten those up in the bottom turn that the opposite direction that you were just turning it until it locks out again until it gets too hard to turn and then you're going to tighten those bolts up in the bottom again and rotate it that that initial direction that you were rotating it to begin with to keep um, bringing that laser around so essentially you could go in 360 degrees with this it would just take a while okay so you're going to turn the knob it locks out or it, it it comes to a stop you lock the bolts in place you turn it the other way you turn the knob some more after you loosen those bolts again, it comes to a stop, 
you tighten those bolts up in the bottom, turn the knob the other direction, it clocks it at a different position. You can keep doing that in both directions um, until you get a perfectly vertical line and that laser when you bring your beam up and down should not wander back and forth. It's a little finicky, it'll take a little while to get dialed in. It's um, it's pretty sensitive so uh, once you guys have it dialed in you should never have an issue with it again it should always stay that way just make sure you lock those bolts back in place whatever you do don't over tighten these two on the bottom they're small allen heads uh, that are countersunk and they seat on this plastic um, if you strip these out they can be hard to get out but what you can do if they start to strip if it if that first time that it it turns uh, the Allen key but it doesn't turn that bolt what you can do is you can take this piece right here this little Allen wrench and just heat the end up with a small butane torch or a lighter and you can stick it on the end of this bolt I stick it in there and hold it in there for 10 seconds and it'll warm this up just enough where it'll loosen it up um, it makes it really easy to pull them out doesn't do any damage don't I wouldn't heat it up with a rosebud but um, you, it transfers enough heat to that bolt to make it really easy to pull out. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me an email, cody at trinityfabworks.com. Another thing, if you notice when you touch it, if you can move it back and forth, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but down at that end, if I want, I can pivot this a little bit back and forth down there. That just means your, um, your tool adapter bolts are a little loose so what you can do you can remove the uh, allen wrench that's built into the tool adapter take out your tool and then right in these two pockets you just put your allen wrench in there and snug it up a little bit it doesn't need to be tight um, just snug it up a little bit make sure there's no more play in it and pop it back in and you're good to go all right, now since my beam as, uh, or since the laser as my beam goes up and down is going further away from me um, as it approaches my material, what I want to do is I want to turn this clockwise. But in order to do that, I need to loosen up those camber uh, adjustment screws or lock screws on the bottom. So I can crack those loose. Uh, really, they need a half a turn. And now I can turn this clockwise, and it can be kind of hard to do. Um, it gets to a certain point where it's out of adjustment, and there is a way to do that, and I'll show that here at the end of this video. So I'm going to turn that, and then run it up and down real quick. That will throw my alignment off, by the way. Uh, that's okay. We'll align it again later, but um, I want to go ahead and run it up and down just to see if that moves still. actually looks pretty spot on right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this back down and don't over tighten these they're really small so they do have a tendency to want to strip out if you over tighten them just barely snug them up so that it won't move on you um, now I can go ahead and realign my laser um, with the um, the, the scribed lines or the, the etched lines on those pieces of stainless. And should be good to go.